If you would tell anyone back in the 60s that in the year 2024, we would neither have a moon base, nor would people have landed on Mars, nor would we have underwater cities, and that all we would have would be one single, pretty small and unimpressive underwater habitat in only 10 meters or 30 feet of depth, people back then would have been shocked and probably in disbelief. For how could technology just not continue progressing at that breakneck fast speed with which it had done so in the 50s and 60s of the last century? It was the age of exploration and of testing out new and crazy ideas. People thought that we would conquer all possible habitats, space, naturally, but of course also the fascinating and unexplored world of the deep sea. Pioneers like Jacques Cousteau or George F. Bond enabled us to live underwater and they themselves lived in some of the first underwater habitats in those times. We went from not being able to live underwater at all to the first pretty impressive underwater habitats in the 60s with enough space for several people to comfortably live inside of them for sometimes multiple weeks. But, the same as with space, the past visions of the future, where it was imagined that by the year 2000 we would have entire cities on the moon and Mars, exactly like with space, the underwater future visions of the past never happened. But what if I told you that, exactly as with space, where we see this new kind of space race and this renewed interest in human space exploration, and this rush to build Moon and later Mars spaces, there is also a renewed interest in building far larger underwater bases than any such base in the past. And there are actually right now two very interesting proposals for future underwater labs in the works which will blow your mind. <laughs> Sometimes the future that we imagined way back takes longer to materialize. Okay, maybe a lot longer, decades longer, but such is the reality of economics. Yes, we could have built moon bases in the 70s. Yes, we could have landed on Mars by 1990. But the problem was the lack of an economically sustainable use case. It would have been entirely government funded. And the same is of course true for underwater laboratories. They depend entirely on funding and were very expensive to construct and to maintain. But with advances in material science, with advances in manufacturing, we can now build underwater laboratories much cheaper and at a much larger scale than what would have been possible for the same price back in the 60s. The use case now is of course the scientific exploration of the ocean and of marine habitats and with growing environmental concerns this is now a cause where you can find a lot more backers and investors than you could have back in the 60s. And believe it or not there are currently two very promising underwater laboratory concepts in the works which I think both have very good chances of being realized. One is called the Proteus and it is by the Proteus group founded by none other than Fabien Cousteau, the grandson of the legendary ocean explorer Jacques Cousteau. So it seems that a fascination with the deep sea definitely runs in the Cousteau family. The Proteus Ocean Group is a social enterprise which aims to build the first equivalent of the International Space Station of the Ocean. So basically the first international ocean station. And this can be done for the surprisingly cheap sum of 135 million dollars. Now if that sounds expensive to you, please consider that the International Space Station has cost up until now an insane 200 billion dollars with a B in 2024 inflation adjusted dollars. So the Proteus Lab would be more than thousand times cheaper and offer future Aquanauts possibilities that currently simply don't exist. 
Proteus would be located off the coast of the beautiful Caribbean island of Curaçao, and the underwater lab would be far larger than anything that came before, about 10 times the interior volume of the current only underwater lab that we have, Aquarius. So future Equinauts will have a lot more interior volume. On top, the station will be modular, meaning that you can attach or detach different modules, for instance habitation modules or research modules, depending on the need of whoever would want to lease it. Governments, research institutes, companies, organizations could lease space on this future ISS of the oceans and we could thus learn a lot more about the sea than we could have until now. They plan to raise funding and hopefully build and deploy that station in the next years. My own estimate is that they probably will achieve this shortly before the end of this decade. But as if that wasn't enough, another company called Deep is also working on the future of subsea habitation and they call their modular station the Deep Sentinel. Founded by Steve Etherton, that project looks a lot more ambitious than even Proteus. But the idea is very similar, namely to build an equivalent of the ISS of the deep. Sentinel, however, would allow to build even larger underwater stations than Proteus, since the modules themselves are so large that even one module alone would make for a pretty decently sized underwater laboratory, looking even roomier on its own than the entire Aquarius reef station, which is currently, as I mentioned before, the only underwater laboratory that humanity has. But combining multiple of these base modules, very large underwater stations could be built far larger than anything we had in the past, even larger than the previously mentioned Proteus station. The Sentinel stations would also be able to withstand higher pressures of up to 200 meters or 600 feet of depth. And since I have played far too much Subnautica a few years ago, I can't tell you how much I like the idea of these modular stations at such high depths. This would enable deep sea research like never before. Marine habitats could be explored in a way simply not possible until now. I hope though that the many round windows in the animations and renderings will be able to withstand the high water pressure at such depths. This will certainly need a quite strong transparent semi-metal alloy of sorts. Transparent aluminum? That's the ticket, laddie. The cool thing about Sentinel is that it is redeployable. Meaning that since everything is modular, once a station would have reached the end of its life, it could be collected, refurbished on land, and then simply redeployed somewhere else. Proteus, as well as Sentinel, could revolutionize many fields, such as underwater archaeology, deep sea habitat exploration, and could even serve as a training ground for future astronauts by offering a space analog simulation environment for testing spacesuits for future space missions. I think that it's really about time that we finally build far larger and more capable deep sea laboratories and habitats and it seems that sometimes the future that was imagined a long time ago just needs longer to materialize than we would have imagined. Technology doesn't progress in a straight line. It sometimes progresses too fast and then it needs to take a breather until the next growth spurt which then goes far higher than we would have imagined. So maybe in 20 years we will not only have bases on the moon, possibly even on Mars, but also below the ocean in order to explore that vast unknown which we sometimes seem to understand even less than space. Proteus and Deep Sentinel will allow us to explore the oceans like never before and I cannot wait to see how that will unfold. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please like and subscribe since we'll continue putting out lots of videos on fascinating technological developments. And please consider supporting us on Patreon or via YouTube membership because that would allow us to make more and even better videos. Thanks for watching. All the best wherever you are and see you next time underwater and they themselves and they themselves cities on the moon and Mars exactly like 
exactly like with space, the underwater futures, the underwater future visions and this and this rush to build future underwater labs in the works, which, which are, which, and there are actually,